What's up guys, Christian Hanna here, back from YCS Australia. Uh, I got top four. I'm gonna show you guys my Snake Eye deck list. Uh, I'll probably also show you guys a couple of things that I wanted to change that weren't, like, didn't work out as well for me in the summer that I wanted it to work out. Um, as well as like changes moving forward for YCS Columbia and kind of just like my thoughts on like the deck for this format also. But yeah, I'll go through the deck. Then you guys go back. So three Snake Ash, standard, you gotta play three. Two Populous, you have to play two. Um, I see people play three actually recently just because they wanted another starter, but I'll show you another card that's just better to play. And then obviously Oak, and then two Flame Ridge, just engine, engine requirements. You just gotta play these. There's also a version where you could cut one of the Flame Bridges and the other card that I played, Jot, for more non-engine. And your boards are a little bit weaker, but you have more room for non-engine to help you go second, which is important in this deck. But that's just something else to look at. But yeah, one copy of Jet, one, two copies of Flame Bridge. Uh, three copies of Witch, just another starter, extender, just everything you want. And then for my, actually, actually more, there's more engine because I guess there's more copies of the cards. It's like three Bonfire, three Wanted, just more copies of the same cards. And then for non-engine, I chose to only play 13 hand traps compared to like the 17 people are playing now. So it's three Ash, three Valor, three Nibiru, three Impermanence, and one more. So I chose not to play Joe this time like we did last time we played three. Uh, the reason behind that is we don't even want to cross out Joe if we get cross eyed so I don't want to play the one. And I don't want to play through, I don't even want to play it because when your opponent goes Snake Eye Ash and you draw them after they had Populous, they're still on a really good board. So it's not, it wasn't really good for that. And that's kind of how I'm feeling toward, about Nibiru as well. Um, so I could very much see myself cutting the Nibiru for more copies of Mourner just because you can hit the, uh, the Bell Star. But Nibiru and Draw are actually really weird against this deck. I did side three. Because these cards are really bad unless you draw them in combination. And even when you draw them in combination, sometimes they don't work out. So, just really weird cards to play in your deck. Like, if I draw Nibiru and my opponent has Snake Eye Ash, I'm not really happy either. So, like, they're starting on the Flame Bridge and IP, which is very strong. And then I'll probably have, like, two or three copies of Non-Engine. So you have to beat an SP and then two SP, like SP Banish and another SP Banish, and then, like, follow up on top of that. So it's really hard to win. And then the reason why I think I did so well was since everyone's playing like, you know, these like 17 hand trap decks, it's really, it's you're actually like better off going second all the time because you have so many hand traps, but my, I wanted to make sure I could win when I'd go first because when most people double hand trap you, you can't actually play because uh, we had that whole reasoning where it's like summon Snake Ash, it gets Impermanence, summon Witch, it gets Valored or Mourner. The only other extending of your deck is like Bonfire or One for One. And if you don't draw this to you, you actually just pass. So I wanted to make sure I could play one that does happen. Because it's going to happen very often, right? Drawing two hand traps and when they play like 17, 18 is pretty likely. So I wanted to make sure I could play one that does happen. So play three Lullaby, three Cross Out, and three Talent. Um, these cards are insane. Uh, Lullaby was just broken even versus the rogue deck, so you can add Fenrir, or you can just summon, or you can add Ash. If they give you Ash, it's fine. It's an Ash in your hand, or if they summon it, it lets you play around at least one hand trap with your with your starter that you're using. And if you're playing the mirror match, obviously it's insane because grabbing Ash or Witch on top of having another play lets you play around two hand traps, even a third hand trap. So yeah, these are definitely the reason why I did well. I definitely recommend playing these. The reason. Australia had a lot of rogue decks, so if you want, I played 43, if you wanted to, you can cut the three lullabies and play 40. But I think with this format, with the heavy hand traps, you need to draw extenders on top of your your deck. So lullaby is really good, and I think 43 is really strong, and I might like keep playing this. It's just whether or not in your area, if you have rogue decks or not, because this card is just not great against rogue. But it does do something against rogue. It's not like dead, but it is like 
No, obviously not better than any other card in your deck. And then one for one is an extender again. Kind of just the same thing. It's like you want to draw these cards on top of your regular plays because you're going to get hand trapped once or twice. And then you want like any one of these 10 cards to like extend past that. So yeah, it's 40 cards. And then the last two cards, original and temple, you just have to play these as part of your combo. They're how you play. So. And then... Yeah, the only changes I would make probably moving forward, if you want to cut the lullabies, you can, but I think you need them to this format. The way, I mean, the reason why I lost is I didn't draw any hand traps game one or game three in top four, which I could have technically made my deck a little bit better by cutting three cards and adding more hand traps. But then I'm also giving my, I'm also making my deck worse when I go first. So, yeah. Something to think about, I guess. Um, the extra deck is, I'm not going to go into it too much, it's just very standard, same stuff we've been playing. Two Link 3s, you need these for the combos. Uh, Nightmare Phoenix, you need it for the OTK with Atlantis, and just popping random backers in some limit. Uh, SP, SP is broken. I wish I could play two, but there's no rain. Uh, Dark Tremor and Hita, uh, yeah, just broken, like, these cards are so good in this deck. Uh, IP, Karibo, you'll use these every time you play the game. Uh, Synchros, Formula Baron, or Formula Savage Baron. Again, like you could cut the jet and you could cut the Flame Bridge so you could put in like two more hand traps. You, that means you don't have to play these. It, it, you, I would still play these two even if I don't play um, Jet Synchron because if you draw Valor and Witch, you can still end on, you can make Formula and um, Baron. But um, just something to look into just because like I really, I'm just, I really want to draw Nine Engine when I go second. So something to think about. Uh, yeah, Link 4 is Appaloosa, Zolantis, Raiding Phoenix. Yeah, I mean, not much to explain. They're just broken, you need them. And then last card's Typhon. I still like Typhon over Axis Code. Uh, won me a game in top eight. If this card wins you one game of tournament, I'm okay with that. It's usually a really important game that you would not win otherwise, so I will continue to play Typhon over access code because usually access code i feel like you can still win the game if you don't kill that turn and you can play around the beard other ways you don't have to like force game into getting a beard so i think it's really good and then my side deck just more hand traps again when you go second you want to like take out some of those cards that are only good going first and then fit in hand traps but again these cards are not great in the mirror match so Unless you draw two, so that's why you want to add as many as you can so you can have the highest chance to draw two. Um, you can even play three more Bell if you want. That's something that I'm considering. Or you could play the Gamma package, but I really dislike because I hate Driver and Delta. Also, after you use them once, they're dead the rest of the game, so. Not a big fan of the package, but maybe if I played it, I could have won, so. Four Abyss deals. These are broken. Um, I guess the decks are working against. Some people play them against in the mirror match. I haven't really tried that because I think I'd rather just try any other hand trap instead. Um, so I will try that more and I'll let you guys know if that is something that you should be doing. But I don't think so because they're very awkward. At least against Fire King, I definitely wouldn't put it in maybe in the mirror match, but I don't think that's that good either. But they're really good against Voiceless, Tier Element, Despia, any light or dark deck very strong um yeah three summon limit this is one of the cards that i probably will change because i feel like when i go first i'm already winning anyway because i play like the 10 going first cards and like all the extenders and i play the max basically the max going first cards i can in my main deck anyway unless i cut lullaby maybe i can find room for summon limit but i think if this could have been three more like going second cards i probably could have done a little bit better so maybe in the future, like, not play some limit because my deck's already good going first. And I never drew it or needed it. And when I did draw it, I already had, like, Savage Baron, so it just didn't matter. And then the last card, that was just the best card, like, easily the best card in my side deck. Easily the best card of, like, the whole weekend. It beat, like, every rogue deck. It beat even some mirror matches. Even the guy that won the whole tournament, I beat him with this card. There's just three copies of Fenrir. This card is literally insane. It beats all the floodgates. You just start your turn off with Special Summon Fenrir. 
it was it was just insane. Um, when you when you hand trap your opponent twice, like you put in a mirror match as well. When you hand trap your opponent twice with like Droll Nib or Ash Veil or Nib, whatever, and then you start your turn off with a Fenrir, it's so strong because like, how do you? They have to hand trap this if they have some limit. They have to permanently have some limit. This is gonna trade with whatever they have left up in play, and then on their turn that's gonna banish a card as well. So if they don't have some limit, you start your turn off this anyway. You summon Snake Eye Ash, like that gets you something. If this is hand trapped, you get to banish something else. It was just really good. This card banished anti spells for me, summon limits, robberies, like literally any any polymatic card. This card outs. It was so good. Um, I even got to tribute summon it against Flundery's guy and banish their M Pen, which is crazy because I wouldn't I wouldn't have won any other way. Um, it's good against Cash Mirror Match uh, in combination with Lullaby. Somewhere here. It's, yeah. You can Lullaby call Fenrir. If they give you Fenrir to hand, you summon their Fenrir. It uses the fact to add you another Fenrir, which a lot of people didn't like. think I played another copy. I thought I was trying to bait them, but... Um, there's multiple uses against Rogue decks. It makes Lullaby a little bit better post side as well, just because your, your Fenrir is adding a Fenrir, which is crazy. Um, yeah. I think that was the best choice to become just side decking this card. I think, again, like, like moving forward, I probably would not slide some of them just because my deck is so good going first already as it is. Um, I would consider cutting the lullabies to make it 40, but I do like them because going first you need to make sure you can play. Um, I would consider maybe siding the two nibs in my main deck, maybe maining mourner, or adding just more hand traps and try to make my deck just more, a little bit better going second. Maybe cutting the Justin Cron and cutting the flame bridge to make your deck have more non-engine because those cards don't necessarily help you going first or second they're just there for when you're already playing and when you're already playing you're already winning so that's something else to think about it's like if i'm already if my witch and ash already resolved do i really need that on savage baron or is like appaloosa plus like S, like ip and sp already good enough so that's something else to think about um, yeah so the, just those are like the only changes or things to think about while you're making this deck if you guys have any comments in the comment section down below, let me know. I could try to answer any questions. I think this deck was really good for the tournament. I think the only hindsight thing I could do is just make it a tiny bit better with the things I said. But yeah, that's everything. Thank you guys for watching. If you like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.